Hello everyone, this is Shadowman, and this is the beginning of a new series that I'm calling Let's Build a Ball Machine. And in this, I'm going to go from start to finish and show a detailed process of building a new Kinex ball machine. And just so you know, this ball machine isn't going to be very big, and this series is more kind of a uh, experimental thing, because I've never done anything like this before. It'll be a little more fast-paced than a live stream, but a little more detailed than, say, weekly update videos. Not that I've done any of those before, but whatever. When I said start to finish, I really meant it because I haven't even begun on it yet, as you can see. Um, so you can see the buckets aren't even out yet. So before I begin, I just wanted to give kind of a little background on why I'm starting this new ball machine. So, many of you might have seen The Depot. If you haven't, I'll post a link up in the corner of the video. Uh, this ball machine was built as a display for Blocks Bricks Museum, but they kind of wanted me to build a new one because there was never a proper space for The Depot to go because it was had a, too big of a footprint, um, which is about four feet by five feet. The other thing is that the ball machine never really had a finished display case for it to go and so somebody had to be supervising it and um, children and adults would touch it even with a sign that says do not touch so um, that was kind of interesting so they want to put a new ball machine in a different place so that's why I'm beginning on this one so this ball machine I'll show you the plans in a minute but it's going to be about four feet wide and five feet high now when we first began building the depot, we didn't really know it was going to be in a display, so we really didn't design it with that in mind. So um, they said it works 95% of the time, but it's going to be nice to des actually design a ball machine that is meant to go into a display, so I'll be able to make it work even better than that. At least, I hope. So you guys will get to see the process of me trying to make it work, and it'll be fun. One of the main challenges with this machine is that the depot is still up at their warehouse and I don't want to take a separate trip to go get it. So lots of these pieces I have left over and some of them I have a lot of, such as the yellow rods. They're pretty much filled all the way up, but I think the biggest challenge will be decreasing the amount of blue connectors that I use because this bucket is usually filled up. Um, I don't have very many green rods either, they tend to be one that I run out of a lot. Uh, I won't have a problem with these, that's for sure. I have quite a lot of those. Uh, white connectors look like they're also low, but I'll try to make it work and see what we can do with that many pieces. And if I have to, I'll use different colors of blue connectors, which I have right here. These bags are actually unopened, so... Those are some new pieces. To start off with, here's the plans that I just sketched up in a few seconds. So it'll have a four foot diameter base that fits inside of a certain area. And this tower in the back will be a uh, inverted helix lift, which I'll talk more about later. And here's the main towers that I plan on doing. I didn't just want to do a big giant tower in the middle so I have one there and one there with a common center and I'll fill up these sides with elements and all that good stuff and here's a side view showing the helix lift a very good drawing um, and then this is one of the towers they'll probably kinda go downwards a little bit and most of this base is going to be inside of the circular area and yeah so, let's begin.
Alright, so the lift is finished after a few days of building. And let's just have a demonstration of how fast it is. It's pretty good speed. I thought I would have to make it slower than this, but I like how fast it goes. Let's load a ball in. Does it pretty smoothly. Still might have to adjust the tubing, but it's pretty good right now. I still have to fix the top because that tubing there is a little bit in too much. I'll have to bring it out and probably take it out, like take some of that out, but it's not a big deal. Here's the motor part. The blue gear in there is spinning pretty fast. And that is six feet high. That's the tallest inverted helix lift I've ever built. And it's interesting because there's actually some bending that goes on in the middle. It's like you can bend it back and forth. So it's pretty flexible, but it still works really well. So next. From the bottom here, I'm going to begin on the planning out the tower structure. So that's what I'm going to be doing next.